Hello, dear friends, and welcome to the Mission Evolution Radio Show, where we share thoughts with leading edge experts to uncover expansive and evolutionary truths that support the path to unity and enlightenment. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka, and this hour we'll be exploring difference makers, evolving women's relationship with money. During the polarization of the past age, major imbalances have formed, compromising both men and women. One of these distortions is the ability to make money. While women are still subject to lower incomes, men are burdened with being the major providers. Men and women tend to have very different approaches. As we evolve into the new era, we need to bring both perspectives to any topic at hand. For only by combining the masculine and feminine methodology equally can we evolve into wholeness as a species. This hour, we'll look at bringing balance and synergy to the issue of abundance. With us to discuss this feminine portion of this dilemma is Mary Flor Toniato, the author of Money, Manifestation, and Miracles. As a CEO and founder of Power with Soul, she specializes in helping women entrepreneurs, professionals, and leaders to reach financial prosperity and success while fulfilling their social promise in the world. Her work has been featured internationally in media outlets such as Yahoo Finance, Washington Post, International Business Times, Los Angeles Times, and more. Her website, powerwithsoul.com. Mary Flor, thanks for joining us on Mission Evolution. Thanks so much, Gwilda, for having me. I'm excited to be with you. How did you become involved with women's issues regarding money and leadership roles? Well, you know, um, that saying that we teach best what we most need to learn it really applies here. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because I had my own uh, journey with money when I was um, in my early 20s. I, I left a challenging marriage and I had a tiny baby girl to support and I had to build us a life. And around that time, I was really, really feeling anxious about money and I was living from paycheck to paycheck. And I remember thinking to myself that if I ever had an opportunity to help empower women with money, I would do it. And, you know, fast forward 20 years later, um, I moved forward into um, corporate award-winning executive and then as an entrepreneur. And then I started working with women on this very topic because sooner or later, whether it was life coaching or business coaching, the topic of money would come up. And there was a real sense of feeling uh, less empowered about money uh, for women. So that again, that promise that I had made came back to me. And I said, now is the perfect time to really help women become more empowered with money and therefore more empowered with their life. Outside of the hard knocks, do you have any educational background regarding the subject? Well, I am a uh, professional coach, a certified professional coach, and uh, I train specifically around money and, and getting certifications specifically for women around money. And, um, and I found that also really, really helpful because that process also helped me go through experiencing what it is that I would be uh, teaching. And I'm also... Um, as practitioner of positive psychology and as a researcher in this area as well. And so my gra all of my graduate work has supported um, this type of research. And the then my coaching, working with women, um, has led to all of these experiences that I could put together and really help other women and even men, really, because men also have a relationship with money to find value in becoming empowered with money. What have you discovered about the current status of the wage gap? Well, you know what I've discovered is it's still it's still really, really prevalent, even in uh, countries that um, like Canada, for instance, um, who are really, really progressive and their their governments are our government has uh, in our recent federal budget really makes an effort to put resources in addressing the wage gap so even though 
there are progressive uh, countries that are doing that. I mean, globally around the world, it's still uh, very much uh, of an issue in terms of women still making 70 cents of every dollar. And that's, you know, the average. And that's just what I call one of the the symptoms to uh, helping women um, becoming more empowered around money and around their lives. Well, what do you mean 70 cents to the dollar? How, how's, what, <laughs> I'm lost there. Okay, so um, women are making 70 and the same job as men, and they're making um, 70 cents less. That's a global Se- average. Oh, 70 cents less. I mean, sorry, 30 cents less. Okay, because they're okay. making 70. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got yeah. you now. Yeah, what, yeah. What do you, what do you think caused the, this gap in the first place? Well, there are a number of things, um, Gwilda, in terms of as a society, that the structure that we've created has allowed that. Um, in terms of culturally, we tend to think of uh, men being the higher wage earners and women having a supporter role, especially in family and in homes. And traditionally, over the years, that's the way it's um progressed. And, you know, to the point where um, I have uh, an example of somebody who shared a story with me of when they were growing up, uh, she had two older brothers, and um, every week their father would give them allowance, and she would consistently get less of an allowance than her brothers. And so when she asked, she she was told, don't worry, dear, when you get married, your husband will s- help provide for you, but your brothers are going to be the breadwinner. So that kind of um, mindset, that kind of practices in terms of what we've been surrounded with, that helps to fuel these types of actions. And then there's the policies around that, um, that then get created. And uh, so there is that um, imbalance, as you said earlier, between, you know, um, the, the feminine and the masculine. And for us to really move forward as a society, it's time to bring them together and balance. Well, we do still have to consider, um, you know, who's who takes time out for having babies and if they're going to nurse their babies and that sort of thing. Um, There are differences between men and women. How do you how do how do we factor that in there? Well, for instance, um, it comes down to policies in that there has to be more generous um, uh, policies and even legislation that could help women take that time out and still have access to their income or their benefits. And I think that those would be really progressive ways in which as a society that we could also reward women for a really, really incredible role in bringing up future citizens of the world. So if we're going to look at equality, which I hope we're, we're driving towards here, as yeah. much as can, there, there can be, because we are different beings, right? We have different yeah. physiological roles. But wouldn't it also uh, stand a reason that uh, making a provision for men to take time off so that they can be with the young uh, as well? Yes, it's actually that's happened. Uh, that exists in in um, Canada. I think it exists in the U.S. as well. Paternity leave, and it's huge in in uh, Scandinavian countries. Um, nice. I, yeah, I think it's even um, uh, something like two months to three months um, for paternity leave on top of the maternity leave. So there are nations um, that are doing it. Nice. So in correcting the wage gap, uh, would we not be reducing the men's earning power in order to increase the women? I mean, it has come from somewhere, right? Well, why wouldn't we just increase the women's to keep it? um, Why would we have to decrease the men? Well, just because there's a certain amount of money available out there as far as what uh, co- corporations and this and that uh, a lot towards wages. Um, I, I would think if, if you drop one, raise one, you'd have to drop the other. Well, I suppose, depending on that corporation or that company's how, um, uh, however they drive to um, equality and equity, um, they would have certain uh, means to to look at how they can best address that. So I suppose yes, that would be that would be another option. 
So it's going to be a bit revolutionary and evolutionary, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Um, and you know, I'm 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 really happy though that we are moving towards that, and we're seeing this really in a lot of contexts of a women's uprising at the. Um, at the moment around the world, you know, whether it's the Me Too movement or Time's Up, uh, there is really this this push and uh, for women's empowerment and equality. And there's also some really highly, highly evolved men that are um, supporting us in, in this um, aspect. Yeah. Well, it's time for a commercial break. Mary Flora and I will return shortly, so don't you go away. You're listening to the Mission Evolution Radio Show, Coming to you on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv simul tv offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like x-zone sci-fi and horror we are worldwide no other provider offers that 500 built-in video games no need to have an extra expensive system we have them included free video on demand live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Welcome back. This is the Mission Evolution Radio Show, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. To stay abreast of all the wonderful information and tools we have, visit our website, missionevolution.org. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka, and our guest this hour is Mary Flor Toniato. Her website, powerwithsoul.com. Mary Flor, what's so unique about women's relationship with money? Well, it's really interesting to really understand that better, um, 
Gwilda, is we actually have to look to the female brain um, in terms of that is because of the fact that um, for women, we have more connecting brain cells um, than the male brain and a larger capacity to um, for emotion, for language and for communications. And so when we look at this in terms of how women perceive money, this actually comes back in in the sense that women don't see money in a straightforward, uh, linear way, as as do men. Uh, for us, we see money in we don't see it in isolation. Uh, we see money as uh, connected to emotion, to to meaning, and to relationships. And so, for women, uh, we're more likely to take into consideration our feelings for others and our relationships in making uh, financial decisions, especially uh, big financial decisions. And so we also, uh, this this emotional capacity also leads us to want to use money to express um, love, to be taking care of ourselves and to help others who are less fortunate. And I actually call this the um, unique aspect of the feminine connection to money. Well, I, everything you've described, I've seen men display. Yes, they do also. Of course they do. My point, though, is that women tend to do this not as a secondary aspect. They do it initially that from the start because it's innately ingrained within their within their uh, psychology, if you will. Okay. So would you give me an example of how a woman's relationship with money differ from the men? So, for instance, um, when somebody is uh, a woman's making decisions around money, let's say she comes into some sort of um, uh, amount, she's more willing to think, okay, oh, great. Uh, now um, we can, I can spend this on my children. My children need this uh, new thing. And um, they would not necessarily spend on themselves as the that could be the last um, aspect that they do and in spending that money. Whereas for men, um, they could certainly do the same things, but they would would initially think about themselves too and how how they could uh, spend that money on themselves as well. Initially. So, what would be the advantage of blending the feminine approach with money to the masculine? Well, the, that would be so fantastic is because we can call on each of those, um, those traits, for instance. So there's the, the, uh, the feminine of the, the nurturing and helping others, giving it back and paying it forward. And in the masculine aspect, it could give women um, more of an opportunity to, for instance, charge what they're worth, state their fees, um, and feel more confident when talking about money in money conversations or money negotiations. So both of those could could be a really, really nice blend. It seems like, you know, a couple working together could bring that together as well, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, ex actually, I have uh, one client who... Uh, because she's in business for herself, when she's going to have um, some tricky money conversation that she's not um, feeling that completely confident with, she's actually asks um, her husband for almost like a tip in terms of specifically what to say, you know, just to kind of help her uh, form that uh, strategy or approach. Yeah, it make, makes a lot of sense. But, you know, we're, we also have masculine and feminine aspects in ourselves. Is there a way that we can find that inner balance? Well, the inner balance really is um, the fact that um, there's a time and place for all of this um, in terms of our of how we act in terms of money. Um, it can't if it's just, you know, particularly too masculine uh, heavily depending on maybe being too assertive um, on, on some aspects where it's not needed. I mean, maybe that's not going to work so well for a woman whose um, personality um, isn't uh, innately in that way. So she won't be able to uh, do that on a, 
on an extended basis because that's not her area of of balance, if you will, in terms of her personality. Uh, so we we do have to though uh, really be cognizant of the fact that we have access to both of these. A masculine and feminine, and we ourselves know ourselves really, really well, and we can uh, work on finding that balance for mm. ourselves. So it's yeah. a little bit of an experiment, you know, if you will, Gwilda. And it's even like, I call it like uh, building a muscle. You know, you, you kind of start out um, trying something out and, and you look and give, give, get some feedback out of the kind of results. And you, you look at whether that was successful for you or you want to try it another way next time. And that's how, you know, you can become comfortable in, uh, in your own skin, if you will, in, in using both feminine and masculine. Yeah, it'll be curious to see how much of uh, women's relationship to money is a conditioned response from our past ways of being in the world and how much is a feminine, just the, you know, makeup of our brain. Yeah, no, that's a really, really good point, uh, Gwilda, because um, a lot of the, the conditioning, as we talked about in, in the earlier um, segment, is that it really has a lot to do with uh, society and socially and culturally as well. Mm. What what other effect do you think more equal earnings will have on our economy and our social structure? Well, I really think that um, there there will be really more respect in terms of um, the role and the gifts and the talents that that women have, and I think it will really really have a positive impact on our the the upcoming generation for both. Uh, women, uh, young girls, and young boys. For young girls, it's a really um, increases their sense of self confidence because they're seeing all sorts of role models um, in women that um, are respected and that are making these huge contributions. And uh, for for young boys, that will just be a natural um, expectation for them. And so, so it's really has the potential from a generational point of view for us to really uh, get it right. Well, yeah, to unburden the men on, uh, yeah. at the end of the day too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you, what are the difference, difference makers? So difference makers, um, I talk about that in the point of view of, um, doing good while doing well in your business and life. And when I say that when women are empowered with money, they become difference makers because not only will they change their lives for the better, but they will do so for their families and for communities at large. And on average, research shows that women reinvest 90 cents of every dollar that they make back to health back to family, back to nutrition, back to education. And this is also occurs in um, developing nations. And so that's how I um, connect the fact that um, the difference makers aspect of the fact that when women are empowered with money, they have this opportunity to become difference makers. Well, if men didn't carry most of the burden of providing for their families due to the current state of affairs, wouldn't they be freed up to be different makers as well? Yes, they would be as well. And they and they can be. There's nothing here um, in this book and in the work that I do that that stops men. It's it's really just a way to call an action to action, um, call to action for women that they, too, can move forward in this way. So, again, it's bringing balance from both sides. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, isn't that kind of what these times are about, is uh, um, coming into center, correcting imbalances? Yes, it's happening so much right now. And uh, and that's really, um, we're also very, very uh, fortunate with these, uh, as I was saying earlier, with, with the men who want to champion these causes for women, for men who want to support the fact that love seeing women um, also really um, become successful, as successful as men have have been, for instance, in the business world, in the tech industry, where it's still male dominated. It's, you know, there's more opportunities um, that men are trying to make to to help women um, gain access. What difference do you see in your clients um, as as they start to feel more empowered um, in the money arena? 
Wow. You know, it's so interesting, uh, Gwilda, because first of all, I see that um, not only are they feeling uh, more empowered around money, having money conversations, charging what they're worth, increasing their income, but there is literally a, a change in um all aspects of their lives. Uh, For instance, um, someone who may be um, not as confident in having money conversations, um, there's an aspect of money reflecting and mirroring how we can be in other parts of our lives. And um, and, uh, for instance, this one woman who wasn't as uh, confident in talking about money conversations and so forth, she also wasn't very confident in other parts of her lives and relationships. Well, it looks like it's time for another short pause. Mary Flora and I will return to our discussion on the other side of this break. So you stay right there. This is the Mission Evolution Radio Show. We're coming to you on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. ABS Media Day. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State-certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365 Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnick's, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God, and finally, After the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Welcome 
welcome back. This is the Mission Evolution Radio Show, bringing leading edge information, supporting the path to enlightenment. Don't miss all the wonderful things we have to offer on our website, www.missionevolution.org. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka, and we're speaking with Mary Flora Toniato. Her website, powerwithsoul.com. Mary Flor, why do you think that money is such a, a transmuter in this situation? Like you said, when, when a, a woman starts getting a hold of her finances, her uh, ability to um, uh, support herself in the world, why do, you, why do you think it has such a, a cascading effect? I love that word, cascading effect. Um, and the reason is because money equals self-empowerment for women. And um, that cascades in all areas of her life. And somehow she, she finds the confidence to um, assert herself in maybe in relationships that are no longer her serving her, uh, tightening her boundaries, you know, to, to really say no when she means no. And um, and um, that that inner self-worth also uh, really begins to to shine. It's interesting how money would be related to, to inner self-worth. Can you go into that a little? Yes, yes. So I talk about in the book that money is emotional currency for women. We talked about initially how money women perceive money, but money is also emotional currency in that it's strongly connected to women's sense of self-worth um, and self-confidence and even feelings of safety and security. And that that can sometimes come uh, play out in a woman's life, for instance, if, um, you know, she may stay in a, a relationship, a marriage, a career or a job that is no longer uh, helping her grow. But she's she also still needs the security. So it it can play out in that way as well. So how much effect does uh, fear of lack uh, inhibit women or people for that matter? Yeah, well, that's a big deal, too, because I, I talk about the fact that um, uh, our mindset is really, it matters so much because, you know, that uh, that really famous quote by Henry Ford is, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. And that is the power of the significance of uh, our mindset. And so if we take that into the sense of money, um, if we uh, have the kind of uh, mindset of scarcity, we will bring more of that into our lives in, because what we focus on grows. And so if, if we are more prone to, to um, wanting to look for evidence of more abundance, um, we can work towards that and bring that more into our lives as well. So again, what you focus on is what you tend to propagate. Exactly. Interesting. You refer to women as, as having deep-seated blocks against uh, money. What are they? So these deep-seated blocks, um, uh, all to say that um, men have something too, but maybe not as as deep as what I've come across for women. So... Um, the big ones are having a uh, fear around money, uh, especially losing it, losing money, having money and losing it. There was a 2013 power of uh, power of women study that was done in the U S and um, some of the, the survey came back with noting the fact that even in household incomes of 200,000 or more uh, women still feared that they could one day become a bag lady. So uh, I, I was like really fascinated by that. Um, the other thing is around feeling um, guilt. Sometimes um, the, women really feel guilty about spending even, you know, a lot on themselves. And um, then there's the whole ang uh, notion of feeling um, shame around money. And that's probably the one that could be the more deep seated core in that, um, it really cuts to the core of how we feel uh, about ourselves and, and whether we feel like we are lovable. And, you know, this could happen if a, a woman is hasn't um, really felt uh, empowered around financial literacy and, for instance, has amassed a lot of debt. That could be um, a, a feeling, too. And the, the other one is anger. Uh, there 
you know, somebody could be holding a grudge against family members. I had a client one time holding a, a grudge against her parents because um, they spent her college education and she carried around that anger for a long time. And it actually kept a lot of abundance and prosperity a away from her because she just was not uh, in a space to be able to receive it. And so these... Um, these emotions uh, can then lead to the symptoms, which are under-earning, undervaluing, maybe over-delivering, uh, like working long, long hours um, and overtime, even if it's not e expected and secretly resenting it, um, and, um, and, and so forth. It sounds pretty complicated. How, how do you suggest, um, what, what's your method of addressing these blocks? Well... The first thing to do is to really look inward it, because everything, uh, when we go within and we become really, really honest with ourselves, um, we will find um, that there are answers as to um, where these uh, blocks, these beliefs and these emotions have originated from. And then really, once we identify what they are, um, actively work on overcoming these beliefs. And this is what I, uh, I'm so excited to be able to share this book because it provides a step-by-step -step guide um, to as a great resource in if you're feeling any of these emotions or you have any types of these results, there's um, countless of exercises and strategies in there that you can start using today that can start moving you forward in, in the right direction. Do you find that some of your uh, coaching clients really need professional help as far as uh, counseling and not just count coaching, but counseling, uh, emotional counseling, that sort of thing from an expert? It depends. Uh, it depends on what other factors um, there are in relationship to um, their money or other things um, in their life that that's going on. So for instance, you know, I was working with um, uh, a client who's, um, whose marriage was also um, rocky. So as we were coaching together, she and her um, husband were also in uh, counseling, and it actually worked quite well together. And then sometimes, um, at other times, I'm coaching somebody, and they really want to start to uh, get a hold of, of their money and learn some more financial literacy. So they can ev they even start working with uh, financial uh, advisors and planners at that time. So it so works you, really well. Do you have a um, like a referral base that for different aspects of this that you send people to professionals? Yes, yes, and um, and I've built that over time because of the different um, of situations that uh, can arise, you know, as someone is going through the process. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of stuff might come up, huh? Yeah, yeah, and you know, and it's so interesting too, um, Gwilda, because. Um, Usually by the time somebody comes to, to me to, to work on their money relationship or, or, or their business income, uh, for example, I mean, they're really ready at that point. You know, they really want to see results. And so, um, it's, so it's not for the faint hearted. <laughs> no, I suppose it wouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, so, then life isn't, you know. <laughs> no, exactly. Right. And then they know, they know that um, I, I've got... Um, a bigger uh, mission and purpose to fulfill in, in this lifetime. And I really, you know, want to get there because I understand that uh, it often requires money to, to help me fulfill what I need to do. And so this is a relationship with money that um, interweaves our lives throughout our lives. And so it's a really, really positive thing to do um, in terms of uh, looking at what, what could be holding someone back in, in that area. So how can we find our mission and purpose? Well, you know, our mission and purpose, or sometimes people call, um, it's, our, it's our calling. It's um, really, uh, one has to be very open to uh, receiving guidance. And, and, uh, and I mean universal guidance or divine source, if one um, really gets in touch with the spiritual nature of their lives. Um, because what ends up happening is we are 
we are given um, signs and our natural inclination of the passion that we have for certain things, those leaves, uh, leave clues as to what it is that um, we might also love to do and be able to um, nurture it and develop it and then find a way to help serve and, and others. In that way, um, our lives and the purpose and mission of our lives start to unfold in a, a better way. Now, in the book, I do talk um, a little bit about uh, ways to increase your um, your passion and therefore, you know, get closer to your purpose. And so there's a downloadable um, uh, exercise in the book for that. It sounds like there's a uh, quite a, a reversal going on. In other words, we tend to choose our careers on what we think will make money versus what we love. Yeah, you know, that's very, very true. And um, I find, though, that uh, some of the secrets to a lot of uh, people who, who we've seen are, are successful is that, um, and the best advice I've actually gotten from a very successful mentor is do what you love first then find a way. Well, it looks like it's time for another commercial break. Mary Flor and I will be back shortly, so don't leave us now. This is the Mission Evolution Radio Show on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simo TV. Simo TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at SimulTV.com. Do it today. The new nonfiction book, Razor of Madness, is similar to cult movies like Clockwork Orange, Dragon's Tattoo, or The Other Side of Hell. Wayne Morin Jr. and Thomas Lee Howe will expose widespread and systematic deficiencies in this thought-provoking tell-all novel. Mind control rages among scholars in law schools. Human rights are ignored while thought reform and mental manipulation are accepted practices used as behavior modification. Dr. Louis Jolion West comes to mind. Media and public scrutiny shows that United States mental hospitals are in fact destructive murder industries. Razor of Madness Exposé Novel details this epidemic through an in-depth professional and personal investigation. For decades there has been a revolving door policy that still releases killers and pedophiles back into society. The maestro of mind control continues to haunt America to this very day. Razor of Madness is available in paperback or as a downloadable ebook at Amazon.com. I'm William S. Peckham. If you enjoy a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal, then you'll love my novel, From Out of the Woodwork. It's the story of a young Toronto contractor, Sean Kennedy, who buys derelict homes, guts them, and turns them into multifamily dwellings. Slums just waiting to happen. When Sean buys 29 Livery Lane, the house fights back former owners unexpectedly come out of the woodwork as he starts the destruction. The apparitions come to him when he touches old books, reads hidden letters, rummages through old boxes, finds a locket or reads a discovered manuscript of a murder mystery. From out of the woodwork will take you from 1899 to the horror of the World Trade Center, September 11, 2001. Check out From Out of the Woodwork on my website, www williamspeckham.com
Welcome back. This is the Mission Evolution Radio Show, bringing together gifted people of service to the world. I'm your host, Gwilda Wiecka. I always love to hear from my listeners. You can email me, email me at info at missionevolution.org and suggest a topic or guest that's on your mind. Our guest this hour is Mary Flor Toniato. Her website, powerwithsoul.com. Mary Flor, we were just starting to talk about the difference between uh, deciding that uh, going out there. I mean, this is what I was shown when I was in school way young. What area can you make the most money at that's the most popular right now um, as far as earnings go, that you, you base your career on this? And now there's a lot more talk about follow your passion and, and the money will follow. Can, can you go into that a little bit more? Yes, yeah, sure. And, you know, and I think that's, uh, we, we learned in the same way too, Gwilda, because that's, that's the way everybody kind of um, chose uh, their careers. But um, as I was saying before, is that um, a very successful mentor of mine once said to me is that, um, do what you love first, and then find a way to do what you love and help serve others at the same time. And the money will follow and the success will follow because you are in alignment with um, what it is that also brings you um, joy in your life. And um, and I think there is a lot more talk about that now is because, um, you know, the, the Joseph Campbell quote about the follow your bliss is, is really true because if we're looking at the longevity of... Um, uh, creating legacy and and creating uh, meaning and fulfillment in our lives, it does come down to doing what you love, and um, and that's why we can also sometimes see people um, having jobs as opposed to careers. Um, or changing so many careers because it wasn't the right one for them. And they may have never really looked at what is it that I am so, so passionate about? What is it that I really love to do? And so, you know, if anybody listening to us right now is feeling that, um, you know, it's really time to um, go inward and uh, let yourself dream a little bit and uh, see what comes up for you because we all have a passion for something. How can you follow your dreams back from even childhood to start to discover, discover what your passion was? Well, you can do this little exercise that I have in this book called um, a, a passion quest, where you start to look at exactly what is it that I loved so much when I was um, um, a child that I, I did and um, I never... Um, I could never tell time in terms of time passed, you know, really quickly. And I was just really focused on what I was doing. Um, what, what, who did I admire uh, when I was younger? And uh, I thought, wow, they have such the most amazing um, uh, career or job. Um, so it's success leaves clues and so does passion. So it's, you know, you go inward and you start to kind of look for clues um, of what brings you joy and meaning. Do you think we come kind of hardwired for something? Can you, Sorry? Like you were saying, go back to your childhood. What did you have passion for as a child? Do you think that we come, you know, come into the world with a passion, with a, with a, a mission, or is it something that develops? Um, I think it does develop. Um, there are some people who, uh, from childhood, are know exactly uh, what what they want. Um, for instance, my husband um, wanted and knew right away. Uh, in grade school, that he wanted to be a clinical psychologist. And it never uh, deterred or, you know, he, he's gone on to do so many things um, in his career, but he knew it right from the start. Whereas um, for me, I had so many um, skills that I loved and so many things that I, I loved to do. Uh, but I do remember at a very young age, I loved to write. And, um, you know, um, going through uh, my my career, that always had a thread in there, and um, and one of my dreams was to become a, a, an author too. So so that that kind of uh, kept opening up for me as I uh, kept um, showing my passion and, and love for that. So there's a combination there. Um, 
Yeah, I think I think you know again, right? We're talking a lot about balance uh, in in uh, the theme for our conversation. So there there is some people know it right away, and some people have to kind of follow um, their path to to find it. Just shift subjects a little. What's a financial starting point? So in the book, I talk about a financial starting point because like anything in life, uh, when we have a goal over on something, we need to know if we want to get somewhere, we need to know where we're starting from. And so um, the financial starting point is really just that. Um, when you're looking at a financial goal or looking to improve an aspect in um, your abundance and your prosperity, um, it's a great opportunity to assess what your current relationship is like with money. How does money show up in your life? Um, what is the relationship? Is it a love-hate relationship? Is it a feast or famine? Um, it's great to assess some of your fears and doubts around money so you can really uh, look at how you can address them so that you can start to feel um, more um, empowered to get toward that particular financial goal. It seems yeah. like that would be pretty challenging to some people. I think a lot of us are in denial about where we stand financially. Well, it could be for some, and yet for, for others who are really ready to um, to get to the other side in terms of feeling uh, more abundant, they will do it. And, um, and at first, um, there's another... Uh, thing that I have in the book, another exercise where you look at holistically how really wealthy you are in all aspects of your life, not just financially. And usually that really increases people's sense of abundance too, because they could have a great, great um, relationships, uh, great career, great job, you know, great home. And so that can also uh, expand their sense of abundance. And so, again, there's a balance. You can look at what may not be working, but you can look at what's already working as well. What effect does gratitude or the lack thereof have on our ability to acquire money? Oh, I love gratitude. Gratitude is so, it's free and uh, and we could use it at any time. And again, it's one of those things where what you focus on grows. And the more gratitude you have for something, um, the more it can expand in your life. Um, and it could start, I say in the book, to I suggest using a money gratitude journal where you keep track of all of the abundance that comes into your life. And that could even be getting a gift card or get, winning a free dream drink like I did at a coffee shop. And I thought that was just fantastic. And I thank the universe and I keep getting more of these. And, um, and research shows, because I, I also do research on positive psychology, that when we have um, the feelings of gratitude, we actually broaden our sense of well-being, our sense of flourishing, and our physical health as well. How about, you know, we've been talking about money for an hour here. Um, what about the other forms of abundance and would it help to focus on them as well instead of just money? Yeah, it could, you know, um, it, the other forms of abundance is that you can focus on, you know, the richness of your career, the richness of the passion that you have for your, your business and, um, and, uh, your, your happy, healthy home. You could focus on those as abundance as well. Um, if that is something that can then you um, can translate into feeling more um, welcoming, more abundance in all areas of your life, including with money. And um, and if somebody starts with one thing, everything in our lives is interconnected anyways. It can um, still be a holistic way of looking at uh, abundance and prosperity. Do you counsel people to look at what they have and be grateful for it instead of being so focused on what they don't have and seeking it? I do that as well. We do a lot of coaching in terms of reframing to uh, what's working. And that's also really a person part and parcel of um, the process of positive psychology that I use. Um, but we also address why some of those areas um, – they have doubts and fears is because then when we're able to look at it and, and they they give voice to it, it lessens the, uh, the power of it being fearful or doubtful. And so, um, 
then they can, you know, better be a, in a position to start to even uh, feel more um, abundant. So how can what you we've been talking about here, how, how can what you offer help with spiritual evolution? Well, spiritual evolution, I talk about in the book is that money is part of your spiritual purpose. And that some people be, feel quite conflicted with being spiritual and having money. And so if that is the case, um, please remember that even Mother Teresa, who devoted her life to service and to championing the, the poor and the sick, once said that it takes a checkbook to change the world. And so money is often required, especially if you've got a bigger platform, if you've got a bigger mission and a bigger purpose money will be often required to fulfill that. Well, unfortunately, we are already out of time. Mary Floor, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Our guest this hour has been the author of Money Manifestation and Miracles, and her website is powerwithsoul.com. Remember to join our email family to stay abreast of all the exciting new things we have coming up at www.missionevolution.org. This has been... Mission Evolution Radio Show with Wilda Wiyaka on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Join us next time as the mission continues, bringing resource and support to an amazing world. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464. You have heard of the X-Zone? 
Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.